Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I want to show you some electrolyte resistant polymers. Now, one of the difficulties that you face when formulating with polymers is you need to make sure it's compatible with everything else you have in your formulation. And this can become challenging when you want to add electrolyte rich materials, uh, salt water, uh, alpha hydroxy acids, etc., to your formulations because then they're usually incompatible with the polymers that you might be wanting to use in your formulation. So today I want to introduce you to three different polymers that enable you to create electrolyte rich formulas so that you can open up the possibilities to electrolyte rich formulating concepts uh, including some of these materials that are normally quite difficult to formulate with. Now as an example, just in case you're not familiar with what the addition of electrolytes can do to standard polymers, I'm going to show you first up with just an example polymer in here. As you can see, I've already neutralized and prepared this polymer. And now I am going to add salt directly to this polymer. Give it a little stir. And you can see I've lost all thickening and stabilizing properties from this polymer. It's absolutely useless to use in this scenario. But when you use electrolyte resistant polymers, you can still maintain stability in that formulation. You can still maintain the polymeric network, which will give you the formulating features that you're looking for when you select certain types of polymers. The three polymers I'm going to introduce you to today include Sepimax Zen, Sepi Plus S and Sepi Plus 400. These are all available from Sepic. Some of the key features that you'll see when using these polymers is that they are uh, pH tolerant over a broad pH range. This again gives quite a good formulation flexibility. They all come pre-neutralized and your choice of which material to use over another will depend on the type of fill, the sensory aspects that you're hoping to achieve with the finished product. Now, before I add salt to these polymers in water to show you just how electrolyte resistant they are, I'm going to show you how they look when they're prepared using standard uh, preparation methods. This first one is Sepi Plus S. This is just a very simple formulation of the polymer in water with preservative added. And I wanted to show you this first so you can see the viscosity that it can build into the formulation. Of course you have the sensory aspects that Sepi Plus S can bring to a formula. It's suitable for aqueous gels, cream gels and emulsions and imparts a beautiful powdery feel to formulations. It's also compatible with DHA if you're preparing tanning lotions and tanning gel formulas. So this is Sepi Plus S and to this I'm going to add directly 2% of salt. Give it a stir and you'll see it is maintaining its viscosity, it's maintaining its polymeric properties. It is truly an electrolyte tolerant polymer. You can see maintaining viscosity, so it's maintaining all of its polymeric features that it had before the addition of salt. I now want to introduce you to another material, this is Sepimax Zen. Now Sepimax Zen can yield quite clear or slightly hazy gel uh, formulas. It has uh, a beautiful elegant velvety feel. So if you wanted a clear or slightly hazy formula, Sepimax Zen is the product of choice. Again this is just Sepimax Zen in water with preservative added and to this I'm going to add 2% salt. and show you how it's able to maintain its viscosity, its stabilizing properties. So you can imagine using these polymers in gels, cream gels, uh, some even in emulsions, 
and they'll still maintain their stability, their viscosity enhancing benefits, their stabilising benefits, even when a large amount of electrolyte is added. And now for the final one I'm going to introduce you to, this is CEPI Plus 400. Again you can see a beautiful polymeric network has been formed. This is just the polymer with water and preservative again. And now adding 2% salt. CEPI Plus 400 gives a beautiful silicon touch. It's great to use in aqueous gels, cream gels and emulsions where you want that silicon feel. Giving it a stir with 2% salt and you can see again that polymeric network is still very stable, still maintaining viscosity and its stabilising benefits. So now you've seen the impressive electrolyte tolerance of these polymers. But just like any polymer, or gum for that matter, method is crucial. You need to make sure you process any gum or polymer in the right way to get the best results. Now these polymers have very specific processing needs. Sepimax Zen is best added in the oily phase and then mixed for 10 minutes with a deflocculating stirrer at 1000 RPM or add in the aqueous phase, leave overnight preserved, then mix for two minutes using an anchor stirrer at 100 RPM. Sepi Plus S, you can add to the oily or aqueous phase or after emulsifying. Using a rotostatter is best for two to three minutes at 4000 RPM. And Sepi Plus 400, for cream gels, add the polymer to the oil and then add to the water phase. For emulsions, add the polymer to the oily or aqueous phase before processing and use a deflocculating stirrer for 3 to 4 minutes at 800 to 1200 RPM. Of course, when scaling up, you'll need to validate your processing methods depending on the batch size that you'll be preparing. Now you were probably impressed with seeing the amazing electrolyte tolerance of these polymers when they were just polymer in water and salt added. But they can do much more than just that. They can stabilise quite a high amount of lipid as well. And to show you, I've pre-prepared some mixtures and in these mixes I've used 3% of each polymer in 81% water with a preservative and then I've also added 15% lipid. And I want to show you the viscosity that we have. This is Sepimax Zen. Now, Sepimax Zen is better for creating gels, but I just wanted to show you with 15% lipid, it is quite capable, more than capable, of stabilizing 15% lipid. And I'm showing you this so that you know you have the formulation flexibility to add easily up to 15% lipid when using Sepimax Zen as your electrolyte resistant polymer. You may choose instead to use Sepi Plus S. Again, simple formulation with just 15% of a lipid. And you can see beautiful emulsion has formed. So this is a beautiful cream gel uh, type emulsion and of course still maintains its electrolyte resistance. And finally Sepi Plus 400, again 15% lipid added. This isn't to say you need to add this much lipid, but just want to show you how efficient these polymers are at stabilizing quite a high proportion of lipid and still inferring their electrolyte resistance. I hope you've enjoyed the introduction today to some amazing electrolyte resistant polymers. I look forward to helping you with more innovative formulation solutions on the next video.